On numerous occasions, sometimes more than numerous, I've talked about the principle of falsification, especially in terms of the supernatural realm in which God, angels, demons, and David Blaine allegedly reside. Simply put, falsification is the ability to rule out a given possibility. It's a kind of shortcut to knowledge in that Proving a theory to be exactly correct is virtually impossible, whereas proving a theory to be incorrect can be achieved with a single counterfactual example, test, or experiment. The statement that all swans are white is falsified by the single case of a black swan. In the alleged supernatural realm of God, Jesus, and Casper, all things are possible. At least that's what Jesus said in the Gospels. But if all things are indeed possible for God, then no possibility can be ruled out or falsified. However improbable something might appear to us, it is always an option for the tribal war god of Abraham, making impossible our ability to know anything, even provisionally. Theoretically, this is the case because the alleged supernatural realm lacks the kind of causal predictability we find here in the natural world. God is not governed by or subject to any kind of law or set of rules. He is a magical being of unlimited power, for whom there are no governing forces such as the descriptive laws governing the physical interactions which place limits on our experience here in the natural world. In that world, the world we live in, falsification is a useful tool in terms of acquiring knowledge. But there's an even more useful tool scientists use to confirm their hypotheses, at least provisionally. That's the idea of predictability. If theory X is provisionally true, then we should observe Y when we do Z. We make predictions, and then observe to see if those predictions are accurate, reliably, and repeatedly. Ironically, this idea is, or at least was, supposed to be a principle governing the religious as well. Deuteronomy 18.22 says, If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously. So do not be alarmed. For instance, if a supposed Messiah says that the current generation will see the end of times, and that generation leads to another, and another, and another, with no end of times in sight, we can safely dismiss the idea that that person making the prediction had any connection with the Lord. Likewise, if you're going to claim that a particular prophecy, which you interpret as being a messianic prophecy, says the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem and go on to conquer the Assyrians, and that alleged Messiah born in Bethlehem does not go on to conquer the Assyrians, we can once again safely dismiss the idea that this person born in Bethlehem was the Messiah. The same goes for a religious leader who tells his followers that they will do greater works than he did, greater than raising the dead, healing the sick, curing blindness, and walking on water, and then failing to produce a single follower who can do such things, let alone even greater works. Science and the Hebrew Bible have both given us a simple and effective way to determine whether our theories or prophecies are correct. If the predictions made by the theory or prophet don't come true, there is no value to be found. You can simply abandon the idea, revise it and try again, or in the case of the religious apologist, you can tweak it unrecognizable and hope that no one notices. Once again, I'm me. Thanks for watching.